Hi folks, it's good to be with you today. And uh, we're sharing the Word of God. And it's uh, John chapter 8, verse 31. So what shall we say about this? If God is for us, no one can be against us. And God is with us. He even let His own Son suffer for us. God gave His Son for us, all of us. So now with Jesus, God will surely give us all things. Who can accuse the people of God as chosen? No one. God is the one who makes them right. Who can say that? Well, who can say? Who can say that God's people are guilty? No one. Christ Jesus died for us. That not at all. He was also raised from death, and now he is God's right side, speaking to him for us. Can anything separate us from Christ's love? Can trouble or problems or persecutions separate us from his love? If we have no food or clothes or face danger or even death, will that separate us from his love? As the scripture says, for you are in danger of death all the time. People think we are worth no more than sheep to be killed. But in all these troubles, we have complete victory through God, who has shown his love for us. Yes, I am sure that nothing can separate us from God's love, not death, life, angels, or ruling spirits. I am sure that nothing now, nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above us, or nothing below us, nothing in the whole created world will ever be able to separate us from the love of God has shown us in Christ Jesus our Lord. So here is about the love of God, that God's love cannot separate us, nothing can separate us from that love, but we can only experience that love if we trust Jesus Christ. And that's the important thing because often Jesus said, if you know me, you know the Father. And he was sent by the Father, and he was sent by the Father to do the Father's will. And doing the Father's will was to be obedient to the Father and to die on that cross as our Saviour. In Mark chapter 10, uh, the Lord Jesus said, I give my life a ransom for many. And Jesus gave his life as a ransom. He paid back. Uh, he, paid, he paid the debt that we owe. He paid us out of slavery. We were in slavery to the devil. We were in slavery to sin. We were in slavery to this dark world. A world of darkness. A world of apostasy that had fallen from God, that had fallen from His grace, that had fallen from His love. And Jesus had come to pay us, to, to save us, to redeem us from the curse of the law, from the, from the judgment of God, and by taking the judgment on our behalf. And so, if you want that relationship with God, the only way you can have that relationship, the only way that you can have that relationship is, is by knowing Jesus Christ. It's by knowing that Christ died on that cross for you. And if you trust Christ as your saviour, you can have that relationship. And it's a relationship forever and ever. It's a relationship that lasts forever and ever. It's a relationship that brings you into the presence of God. Now nobody in history can get you into God's presence, only Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ can get you into his presence. Only Jesus Christ can get you into the presence of God. It's only by Christ who died on that cross. It's only by Christ who gave his life. It's only by Christ who died on that cross for you. It's only by him can you be redeemed, can you be saved. That is the only way. And Jesus said that he was the only way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. Only by Jesus Christ. And if you get to, to come into the presence of the Father, it's by believing in Jesus Christ. Now, there are many in history that have tried to find the meaning of life. There are great philosophers like Socrates. He tried to find the meaning of life. Plato, Aristotle, all these great philosophers. But they never ever found the ultimate meaning. They were always grasping. They were always searching. There are many false prophets that came into the world. Many false prophets that came into the world and said that they were a prophet. But proved by the immorality of their lives, the things that they did wrong proved that they were false prophets, proved that they were not the true speakers of God. But this man, Jesus Christ, nobody was like him. He was amazing. He was perfect. He was pure. He was holy. He was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. And the Son of God came down from heaven and became a human being. 
And when he became a human being, he was divine, he was holy, he was pure. And that's why he was able to be our sacrifice. That's why he was able to die on that cross for you. Nobody else could die for you. Nobody else was perfect. Nobody else was pure. Nobody else was like him. He was the quintessential, one and only, true and living son of God. And he checkers all philosophers, he checkers all false prophets, he checks make every thinker in history. And if you want to know God, if you want to be in the presence of God, then it's by knowing Christ. And you know, the Bible teaches there is a heaven and hell. The Bible teaches that. There's more teaching on the doctrine of hell than there is about heaven. Jesus taught more about hell than he did about heaven. He said there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And you see, hell is a place where we're, where, where we've rejected God and we experience that rejection. We experience the suffering of that rejection. In outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. But being with God is to be in his presence forever. And God is saying this world is passing away. This world is falling apart. This world is breaking down. This world is never going to be perfect. We're never going to build a perfect world. We're never going to build a perfect utopia. It's not going to happen, folks. You see, the man's building, the building of Adam, whatever it is, whether it be a city, whether it be a town, whether it be a village, if it's built on Adam's principles, the principle of our first human, Adam, then it will fall apart because at the center of Adam was sin. And sin is selfishness. Sin is pride. A man can never build a perfect city on pride. Man can never build a perfect city on selfishness and sin. And so man's project is doomed to fail. Man's plans are doomed to fail. There will be no utopia in this world. There will only be weeping and gnashing of teeth in this life. For this life will be, as the Lord says, near the end of time, there will be wars, rumors of wars, there will be all sorts of catastrophes in the end times. And we're in the end times now, and we're, we're going to experience more wars, more catastrophes. It's going to get worse and worse. And man's pride is going to kick in and say, we're still not going to believe in God. And there'll be a worldwide apostasy where the church even will apostatize, and people will apostatize. But, just in the days of Noah, there were a few that heard. Just in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, there, there were a few that heard. And maybe you're one of those few. Maybe you're one of those few people that will wake up and realize that the days of our world are numbered. That the days of this planet are numbered. That the days of this nation are numbered. There is no future unless it's with God. If we don't trust in God, if we don't trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, there is no future. Because we're building on a false foundation. The foundation of man, of reason, and of man's pride leads to collapse. Economic political, social collapse. Collapse on every realm, collapse on every area, collapse on every side. But, my friends, but, our foundation, the missing Christ, will lead us to heaven. My friend, time is running out. Time is fast running out. There's going to be a day when preachers are going to be arrested in this country. There's going to be a day where they will not let me preach. I'll be put in prison for preaching. There's going to be a day when they're going to shut us down. Not from this city, but from all cities, from all towns, from all villages. There will be a day when they will stop us from preaching. And you will not be able to hear the gospel. That will be a day when they stop us preaching. There will be a day when they'll stop me preaching, when they'll stop Christians preaching. Even right now, Christians are being persecuted all around, along the world today. It's no difference in this country. You okay? Do you want to dialogue or discuss?